so welcome back to part seven, I believe, on my utility kitchen series. And today I'm gonna to show you how I had to teach myself how to plump the tap to the, uh, the mains I'd already done previously. So I will leave some video links below or the whole playlist as well. And uh, there's a lot to think about. So thank you so much to everybody's tips on Instagram and Twitter and uh, Plumber's Part or Plumber's Parts uh, YouTube channel because that really helped as well. So keep on watching and I'll take you along with me. So here's where I left things last week. I cut a hole through my worktop for my sink. And I'm just removing this plastic piece before I put the waste in later. And now it's time to fit the tap. And we've always wanted one of these pulley ones and we had to make sure it was the right pressure for it. And this one works with our combi boiler. And because I fitted a speed fit plumbing, I had to use this mono block hose kit. So I'm gonna leave all the links for things below if it helps. You'll also notice that the tops aren't the same, but that's just so it's easier to fit. So the beauty of not having my work top fitted yet is that I could move it to my saw horses and easily get to where I wanted when it came to fitting the tap. But I had to unscrew this mounting piece first. I had to place the decorative piece first, which has a seal, and fit a rubber washer underneath. And before I fit my hot and cold hose tails, I'm now fitting the tap into place with a black mounting screw attachment. But before I tighten it completely, I made sure I lined up the tap pulley onto the right side. Now getting back to the different attachments on the hose tails, I found it easier to fit the shortest one first and then the longest one. And then I'm just nipping them tight slightly by a few mils with a pair of pliers. The other thing I thought was a good idea was labelling them now hot and cold. And then for the long pulley piece, that just pushed and clipped into place, but it also comes with a heavy weight as well. So I'm just unclipping this, fastening it around it, so when we do use it, it should always retract. But I'll adjust this later once the shelf's in place. So it's now time to fit the waste from a sink. But unfortunately, we torn straight through the instructions, getting the pieces out of the packet. So I'm following a plumbing hearts video here, but this is the part that goes under the sink, and then I had to place the rubber seal on top of it, and the spout should always be aiming in the direction of the overflow area. So mine is aiming right. I'm placing the drain here, and then slotting the screw in the hole that comes with it. So the drain section goes underneath, while I'm tightening it up. So those two should lock together. And I had to use a large flathead screwdriver for this. So now I'm working on the overflow pipe, and mine came with two types of rubber seals, one for a curved sink, one for a square sink. So I'm using the slimmer one at the bottom. And you can see some little holes there, which line up with these pins on this overflow section. So I'm just meeting those together. And then I had to connect it to the actual pipe. So I'm just twisting it on, making sure it's nice and tight. So that rubber seal area goes behind the overflow section, and I'm fixing that into place with the screw provided but the instructions did stress not to over tighten it. So I had to place the screw attachment on first and then the rubber seal went over it. You know you want to. Pushing it inside the hole and then tightening it. Well, some of you on Twitter said this was too long and I needed to cut it down. So I'll temporarily fast forward and show you where I disconnected it again and cut it down with a junior hacksaw, then sanded the rough edge with some sandpaper and then put it back. And now for the waste trap, I'm using this McAlpine one, which also has a washing machine attachment. So I'm just lining that up and screwing that on. But I was also able to twist the other areas in whatever direction that I wanted. Oh, and I'm also making sure things are just hand tight. Now, one of the things that I loved about this AstraCast sink is that it came with pre-cut holes. And with it being reversible, I could use either one I wanted and cover the other hole. So I'm unscrewing this cover-up piece and placing one part underneath and on top and tightening them together. So once that was done, I needed to connect the washing machine drain hose to the new McAlpine waste. So I've got a bucket of water here because I knew that there was gonna be water left in it. And then I thought I'd thread it through the same hole where the water goes through. And then I fitted it to the McAlpine piece, but I found the pipe was too low. So let's fast forward again. And I'm using my hole saw and drill to create another hole and feed it through there. That way it was in line with the rest and I could lead it downwards to the trap. So I'm fitting that with a Jubilee clip so it doesn't come off. And I added clips as well to keep it there. The other issue was where I'd finished with a hot and cold tap in my very first plumbing video, 
it really wasn't low enough. So I then had to work my way down from the sink and then work my way back. So I'm attaching pieces that are short enough to allow me to fit a couple more emergency shut off valves. These are so useful for obvious reasons. Oh. If there's a leak, I can just turn it off immediately. It's getting awkward in here now. Come on, mate. If I can pin that there, I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna show you the whole ins and outs of this, so I'll leave a link for that one below. And then I had to create some holes at the back so I could get them to return back to the water access. And then I used some more speed fit pipe and got them to meet to the original pipes. And then it was time to work on the waste pipe so all of that grey water could lead outside to the drain. But I didn't realise there was such a thing called self-cleansing pipes, which means it shouldn't be too steep or shallow because water flows through quicker than food. So for my first attempt, although I didn't show it, all I did was get a long piece of pipe and took it outside and pushed it through the existing waste hole and into the cupboards up to the waste trap. So now I'm just going to skip to where I started making adjustments to get things right. So I've got a tray here below before I start disconnecting everything. I had to cut a slightly longer piece of pipe, so I'm using a cutting block for this and a handsaw, and then removed any of the burrs with 240 grit sandpaper. And then I fitted an elbow piece so it would drop down. So once I've got that in place and the elbow, I had to fit another piece of pipe to go down and have a slight gradient on my waste pipe and I followed the one in 40 method and I've got 150 centimetres here so I worked that out to 3.75 centimetres. So now I'm making a measurement marking of 3.75 centimetres less from the top to the bottom compared to the opposite side where the waste ends up going. So to get it in the right position I had to use a hole saw again and cut another hole. But I had to take my time because I didn't want to accidentally catch any of the plumbing. So I'm cutting my final piece. Slotting on all the elbows and making sure all the parts are connected with the washers. And click these pipes to the wall. And if you're new here and you like what you see, then you might not know I've been nominated for a blogging award. Now, the reason I keep asking each week is obviously you've got to be in it to win it, and I'm hoping it'll create more opportunities to keep learning and sharing. And all you have to do is click on the link and turn the heart red. Yeah, it works. It's hot. Feel it. Oh, that's so cool. So that's it for this one. But if you do anything differently, feel free to comment below and hopefully it will help other people. The other thing is, this waste pipe, I can't get it to be flat against the wall to fit the clips. They're just sticking out of that a little bit too much because I fitted the water first. So what would you do? That's what I'd need to know anyway. I'm tempted to just use some scrap pieces of wood and just fit them to the wall and then fit the waste pipe to it. But if you've got a tidier option, then I'd love to know. I know there's going to be a back panel there anyway that's going to cover it up. But yeah, that's the only thing that I want to do next. So hopefully you like this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you do. And if you haven't voted for me yet, then I would love to win again. Um, yeah, I'll leave a link to that below as well. I think that's it and my voice is going. Right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.